All right, I'm dealing with a topic entitled, Do Not Quench the Holy Spirit. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19, it reads the following. Do not quench the Spirit. Do not quench the Spirit. All right, so now I want to deal with this this morning because I believe that we are getting to a place where many of us might actually be heading towards that. All right, and I want to start off by saying I also quench the Holy Spirit at times. Okay, it's not just um, the, uh, you know, the guys that are working. It's also the clergy, the people working with the Word and working with people all the time. So how do I quench the Holy Spirit? What do I do to quench the Holy Spirit? Now, there's multiple things. I don't want to get into all of them. I'm going to just deal with one or two practical ones. Number one is we have this mindset, listen, I, I need a break. I need a break. I've been spiritual for a long time and I just need a break now. All right. So you could be following these communion sessions. You say, listen, I just need a break from spiritual. Be careful because the Bible still says that we need to be consistent. All right. There is no neutral in the spirit. And I actually need to teach on that. But what happens is this, is you don't have the, uh, you don't have the privilege of sitting down and saying to God, God, um, I'm going to take a break now for a while and, and I'll just pick this up later. The minute you take a break, Satan starts stepping in. Now, I understand the feeling. All right, there are a lot of business people right now that are working very long hours, very hard to try and restore what they've lost in the last few months. I appreciate that. I appreciate that there are many families working very hard to help school children catch up in their schoolwork. This season is not a season to loaf. This is the season where everybody's actually working very hard. But the number one way that we quench the Holy Spirit is when we try and do things in our own strength, when we rely on our own ability and not allowing the Holy Spirit to assist us. So I want to challenge every single believer. Be careful, particularly in this season, where the pressure is on, where we are actually working hard, where we are trying to catch up. I want to just commend you and say, well done that you're keeping this up. But be careful not to go into your own strength, not to go into your own ability. Allow the Holy Spirit to help you with what you need to do. And so I'm not saying that you need to spend the hours that you, that you used to. As long as you keep God as the center focus, even when you are busy. And just say, God, help me with this. Lord, just help me in, the, in getting this done. So number one is we get so busy that we just focus on doing it ourselves, relying on our natural ability. The second one is the flip of that. In other words, I've worked so hard and I've really, I'm exhausted. I just need a break. That you sit down and you almost take a holiday from work and God. Be careful of that too. All right, because we need to allow God to work in our lives on a daily basis. Reduce the time. In other words, don't spend so much time, but still maintain the focus. Because you don't need to spend hours of prayer. There are times when you go into battle mode and you're spending hours, but then there are times when it could just be, Lord, I thank you for your presence. Today, I take five minutes just to pray and release the anointing. Lord, you're going to lead me. You're going to guide me. I'm really busy. Okay, and it's like, let me give you a practical example. It's like David and them, when they went to war, when they are busy at war, they don't have time. They really do not have time to sit and read the word and meditate on God's word when they're in the middle of a battle. And so this morning, I just want to keep our focus. I just want to keep our focus so that we stay balanced with the Lord Jesus Christ and what he wants for us. So don't allow the devil to come 
and sidetrack us so that we actually quench the Holy Spirit who's yeah. actually doing the work in our lives. And so this morning, when we take communion, I want you to come with this attitude. Holy Spirit, you make yourself so real to me. You lead me. You guide me. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in my life. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and broke it. He said, this is my body that was broken for you. Take in remembrance of me. He took the cup. And he said that this is my blood that was shed for me, for you. Take in remembrance of me. As we take today, remember that your physical, emotional healing is there. Your, he, uh, your salvation, protection and provision is there. But most of all know that Jesus Christ has sent the Holy Spirit to help us. Do not quench him. Do not restrict him. How do I know the best way to describe quenching? Have you ever had a hose pipe? That's pouring out water and you twist it or you cut it off. It reduces the water coming out. That's what quenching means. I'm reducing the flow of God's power in my life. You can't afford to reduce the, the flow of power when you are busy or when you are tired. That's when you need it the most. So let's pray. Lord, I just thank you right now that as we come around your table that you are moving by your spirit. Lord, I thank you right now. That as we come around your table, Lord, we ask you please to forgive us of any wrongdoing, sin, wrong motive, wrong attitude. Lord, I thank you right now that you cleanse us in Jesus' name. And Jesus, I thank you for the price that you paid and that you sent the Holy Spirit into our lives. Holy Spirit, we ask you right now. To come and make yourself so real and work in our lives on a daily basis. Lord, I pray right now that you will just show us where we are quenching the Holy Spirit. Where we are restricting the Holy Spirit from working in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Let's partake together. Well, folks, I am so, so excited. I really am. I'm so excited about what God is doing in our nation, what he's doing through the companies, what God is going to do in and through every believer in Jesus' name. But what I'm most excited about is, is that God is giving us tools. God has given us his word. And I want you to know that very soon you're going to be able to get some of this material in a printed form. And so that you've got it, you've got the tools, you've got the resources, you just need to go and apply it. I'm telling you now, God is growing up the saints. God is building his bride and he's building the body so that we're going to be strong and mighty in Jesus' name. All right, so I just want to commend you for staying in the battle, for staying there. I want to commend everybody just being part of this feed today. I know that it's a long weekend and it's holidays. But I want to commend you. Just remember that Jesus Christ is real. And so we are going to do some exciting things for the Lord's store as the body of Christ. So let's pray over, the, over our economy this morning. Lord, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus that we can pray over the economy. Lord, we pray over every sector in Jesus' name. We release the power of God over the economy. We thank you, Lord, that you are moving by your spirit. And Lord, that you are going to do a mighty thing in each and everyone's life in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you. Every sector, be blessed. Lord, we speak life over the businesses because the Christians are there. We thank you, Lord, that as we go and build our altars and restrict the decay, Father, I thank you for the, uh, for the blessing and the anointing of God on every sector in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that you are moving with might and power. Thank you, Lord, that the power of God is going to be made manifest in our economy and we are going to see the blessing of the Lord wherever we go. I pray for every single business person. I pray, Lord, that as they go, they're going to go out with might and power. I thank you, Lord, that this virus die and dissipate off our nation, never to be seen again in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, for every believer, Lord, that we will not quench your spirit. We will focus on you. We will apply the biblical principles and we will see the hand of God move in our nation in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said... Amen and amen.
Well, folks, let's do our declaration. In Jesus' name, I declare by faith that I walk in divine favor. I have preferential treatment. I have supernatural increase. I have restoration, increased assets, great victories, recognition, prominence, petitions granted, policies and rules changed, battles won that I did not have to fight, all because of the blessing and favor of God in my life. 